So um, this Beautiful. is our presentation about John Dewey's paper, Art as Experience. This is Fiona Borger and Lauren Cordemont. And this is going to be Module 2, Art, Objects, and Experiences. So um, just a little background info about John Dewey. Um, so Dewey was um, born in a time of major conflict and change in the United States. Um, he was in Vermont at the time, which was an abolitionist state. Um, and, this, and he was born about two years before the Civil War began. So definitely a time of unrest in the United States and Dewey became a philosopher whose ideas became really important to the formation of public schools as we know them today. So Dewey taught at Columbia University until 1930. Um, and from New York City, he watched both world wars transform the country even more, along with a fight for women's suffrage and the red scares that kept arising throughout the first half of the 20th century in the U.S. And in 1917, Columbia University actually began firing professors who refused to comply with a resolution of unqualified loyalty to the U.S. government from all students and faculty. And this actually led Dewey to co-found the New School, which was a free institution of higher learning that would be open to any class member and not require political loyalty. So Dewey saw things like education, journalism, as well as art as essential to strong populace and democracy. 2A. Yeah. Um, and, okay, so next slide. Uh, so we're gonna talk about chapter one, the live creature. So Dewey viewed experience as a powerful tool for teaching and for gaining understanding. Uh, he mentions art specifically as offering a unique form of potentially transformative experience to both the maker and the beholder. And he argued that positioning art as disconnected from the life of the artist and the artist's experience is problematic because it frames the art as a thing rather than an experiential relationship between the art and the consumer. And Dewey discusses the commodification of art. He blames the rise of capitalism and private collections for causing a gap between fine art and the common experience. And he also talks about how industrialization is what he feels forced artists into that obscure individualism that they feel now. Um, that artists were forced to create works about self-expression, which further separated them from the norm. Um, and on page eight, a direct quote, he says that they exaggerate their separatedness to the point of eccentricity. So um, in chapter three, he talks about um, having an experience with art. Um, he talks about how uh, works of art are understood and experienced contextually through their creation, creation, and that the aesthetic experience is inherently connected with the experience of making art. So they're really inseparable, uh, two inseparable things. And he implies that art and the artist are one that transcend the static limitations that time can put on them. And he really emphasizes the difference between an experience and having something that you would consider an experience, like that experiential nature. Yeah. So um, chapter four discusses the act of expression. Um, he goes into the importance of um, emotion when creating a work of art. Um, Dewey says that emotions are inherently experiential. Um, he discusses that on page 43. He says that one cannot separate emotions and the events, and therefore objects from consideration, you can't, you can't, um, 
have one without the other. So you can't separate the objects from the experience um, when discussing um, the experience. And then finally, he explains how carefully thought out art making and sharing can result in the bettering of our world and our society as a whole. And on the very last page, page 84, he says works of art that are not remote from common life, that are widely enjoyed in community, are signs of a unified collective life, but they are also marvelous aids in the creation of such a life. So basically, if we use art as experience, that experience has the potential to transform society as a whole. Mm -hmm. And then we wanted to discuss some contemporary artworks that we feel really relate to some big ideas that Dewey discussed. Um, we chose these contemporary works of art because of their experiential nature and their focus on the perception of the beholder and the relationship formed between the experience and the experiencer. Um, these works depend on the interaction of the viewer and the personal experience. The personal experiences each viewer brings to that moment. Do we believe that experiences are insignificant if they fail to engage the experiencer in the happening, force the experiencer to apply a personal lens with, with which to perceive the experience, draw connections between the experience and the viewer's past, present, and future experiences, and provide a sense of closure or completeness at its conclusion? So in the case of our selected contemporary artworks, the artists provide significant and potentially transformative experiences to their viewers by immersing them in an intensified experience, as Dewey would call it. In both works of art, the experiencer becomes an active participant in the experience. And an example that I felt really kind of drove this point home was Yayo Kusama's Love is Calling. In this artwork, as you guys can see, the viewer is immersed in an entirely sensory environment. It's composed of a darkened, mirrored room illuminated by inflatable tentacle-like forms that are covered in the artist's characteristic polka dots that extend from floor to ceiling, and they gradually change colors. As visitors walk through the installation, a sound of Kusama reciting a love poem in Japanese plays continuously. And the experiencer is confronted with their own reflection being both the most important thing in the room and simultaneously dispersed and not important at all. So upon exiting the room, the experience is complete and the viewer can reflect on their experience in relation to past, present, and future ones. Super cool. So uh, the artists that I thought were super experiential in Dewey's view were Natalie Durberg and Hansberg. Um, so they're creating an aesthetic experience for viewers um, that I believe is more total than if they were simply to paint um, to paint this. Um, they create sculptures, they have um, they have sounds playing. Um, they also show videos throughout the gallery that kind of disrupts, um, it's kind of disturbing and it really puts you in this place of like uncertainty and um, it creates this like whole experiential um, interaction with, with the art um, that I think is, is more complete than if it was just a painting. All right. All right. So, and then we want to talk about some key ahead. points from our discussion board as well. Um, so, in the discussion board, Michelle mentioned Dewey's writing um, directly challenging museums and preventing the field with an identity crisis. Um, Dewey says that a crowd of visitors steered through a picture gallery by a guide with attention called here and there to some high point does not perceive only by accident there is even interest in seeing a picture for the sake of subject matter vividly realized. Um, 
that's on page 56. Uh, Michelle proposes that museums have changed a bit since this was published in 1934, which is very true. Um, museums have strove to become more visitor centered and engaging. Um, however, she poses the question, is there anything museums can do besides cease to exist um, that any amount of hands-on artist-led activities um, could reconnect the production of art to the enjoyment of it um, to create meaningful experiences that would satisfy Dewey. So how could, how could museums become more experiential? Um, I think that's a really interesting question. I think I feel like museums are still kind of grappling with that question themselves as they try to figure out their updated mission statements even today. Um, and Joyce also posed a great question. Um, what about experiencers that do not have shared connection to the experiences the artist underwent? We think that art and experiences are open to personal interpretation and that there's no wrong way to experience art. And yet the work might be interpreted completely differently than the artist had intended. But we think that part of the power of art is its ability to communicate different messages to people depending on their life experiences. Yeah, definitely. So um, on the discussion board, Elena has a really good question. Um, she asks, does art no longer retain aesthetic qualities to the viewer if they appreciate it without seeking a transformative experience? Are artists who are creating for commissions or for a job, are they less valuable than artists who focus on experience? Um, so that's a really interesting question, but um, we think that Dewey would argue that artists who create work for monetary gain um, help to further position art into obscure individualism and really just promote a, a capitalistic society. So I think Dewey would argue that is um, that that type of art would be inherently less valuable than art created within a context of experience and a culture. We don't necessarily agree with Dewey, <laughs> but I definitely think that's how he would feel. And then Sarah asks a really interesting question as well about art programs still practicing art for art's sake. And she asks if that is because that's all they've ever known, like Dewey suggests, um, or that they never question the theory behind it. And she says that she wonders how many students take art classes and actually experience the thrill of ex the experience of art making like Dewey's talking about. And we think that Dewey would argue that the, that art educators, that the responsibility of art educators is to facilitate those experiential art interactions. Yeah. All right. So our agreements and disagreements section. Um, do you want to start, Lauren? Sure. So something that we agree with is when he talks about aesthetics being directly related to the reception and perception of the consumer and that art forces the viewer to be an active participant in the experience that the art creates. Um, on page 56, he says, to perceive, a beholder must create his own experience, and his creation must include relations comparable to those which the original producer underwent. We absolutely agree that the transformative potential of experiencing art lies within the connection made between artwork and the viewer, and that successful art creates an experience by offering the viewer a point of access to the ideas and the experience undergone by the artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. Um, so one of the things we disagreed with um, was that um, Dewey suggested that in order for something to create an experience, it must be whole, conscious, and complete. Um, so on page 46, he says, the action and its consequence must be joined in perception. This relationship is what gives meaning to grasp it is the objective of all intelligence. The scope and content of the relations measure the significance of an experience. 
So um, by that, he means that the significance of the experience is directly related to our engagement in it, our perception of it, and our ability to relate what we've experienced to past, present, and future experiences. Um, so we don't necessarily agree that closure is a requisite for our or experience um, because um, sometimes we can gain more from unanswered questions or the open-endedness of a work um, or the um, experience that that it doesn't have a, a true definitive end. We agree that sometimes experiences might have a definitive end but it's not necessary for it to have experiential value. Okay. A good so, example of that, like with learning, I feel like sometimes after an experience takes place, um, you might still be learning from that experience. So learning never really has a, a conclusion or closure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, some of our aha moments, um, so we really appreciated how Dewey addresses the aesthetic experience um, through a biological lens. Um, it kind of solidifies the, um, the essential and basic nature of this phenomenon for us. He says that experience has pattern and structure and it is in constant relationship to one another. That was on page 45. Um, so for us, this made sense on like a really deep kind of spiritual level in that um, there's really no separation between object and experience. Um, and, and the viewer and the object are, are really one in the same that kind of touches on the current um, theories of like, you know, we are all one kind of thing, which He's kind of like backing that that up um, with what he's saying. Um, so we feel that what Dewey is saying is that the context and the experience of making are integral to the art and the transformative potential of experiencing the art is incomplete without the participation of the viewer. Yeah, I think that that really is, a, a powerful thought um, and is really relatable, especially maybe this year with <laughs> questioning of existence and, and all that sort of thing that an experience really is incomplete without the experiencer um, and that to separate them would kind of render each individual element kind of meaningless, that life doesn't have meaning without experience and that experiences are experienced by the, the individuals experiencing them or beholding them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we have a couple closing questions for you guys. Um, so can you think of a time in your life um, that you've experienced the type of art that Dewey is talking about, like this full experiential immersion with the art? And if you can, like, what, what was the experience like for you? How did it feel? What did it make you think about? Um, how did it change your life? And do you feel like you can really relate to Dewey's differentiation between experiencing and having an experience? And then we also wanted to ask, um, how do our personal beliefs and values affect the transformative nature of experiences? So what do each individual bring to the table and how does that kind of transform the experience that they're able to have with each work of art or life in general yeah cool well i think that's that's all we have for you guys um thank, thank you. you thanks for listening um bye guys